Alrighty. We got Waddle Peng uh, Pizza. Spawning in as the Red Egyptians. And we got Geese. Switched from his Persians to his Greeks, which are fairly similar. Except for the fact that Toxodi train slower, they cost more, and I think are only slightly better. <laughs> Greeks are like the, the nerfed Persians. I don't know. Their actual value per unit, even though they don't get the units out fast, it's actually a lot higher, I think, in terms of the bowmen at least. Hmm. Yeah, I think they do more damage against uh, infantry, right? Yeah, well, that's it. They're, they're much. They're actually a much stronger unit one to one against the counters, and I think in a one on one fight, they win as well. It's just because Persians have that ability to almost boom in the sense that, like a Celt player can or a Norse player can, maybe even more so once they actually get that. Um, what's their war academy down? Um, I was going to say their temple building, but that sounds a bit noob of me. Um, yeah, once they get that down, they can pretty much outboom everyone for a little period of time until, like, Babs get all the way to having all their gardens out or Greek get all their unique tech out, you know, or Celts start using rights and things like that. So, yeah, there really is this high boom phase that Persia can go through, and if it's not punished and perfectly played by the Persian, you know, it's, it's really hard to actually do anything against them in the late game or in the mid game even yep agreed agreed right. well Greek I don't know the, the tempo of the Civ is just a lot slower so unless you get initial value out of like spear harass or something like that and maintain a lead from there it's really sort of difficult just to out boom and shove in a sense yeah on, I, e I on, you know, on even macro playing anyway so this is a, you know, Wild Wind is known for its really interesting, is the word I'm going to use, woodline. And this is the only woodline for geese. So yeah. it is quite different from, there's nothing in oh, the back it. here. It's like a sacrifice of the gods of his good woodline to be able to one storehouse his wood and his gold together. Yes, yes. The, I take the, that. The I ultimate take that. trade off. It's the ultimate trade off, man. I take it's that. It's actually. Trade kind of cool like I, I sort of wish like every time someone got a one storehouse two gathering point start they you know that there was sort of that trade off there <laughs> no I think that sort of variant would be cool but when it's sort of like oh he's got one storehouse start and I don't uh, it's sort of a bit crappy but in saying that like you know the whole game the whole maps are randomly generated versions of a style so yeah you know it's inevitable so Waddle Pizza has enough for a second town center. Very similar build to last game. And same thing with Geese. But this time, Spearmen don't have the same Pierce armor that Sparrow Bar No, do. That, he's, just, uh, he's just backing off for now. Playing it a little bit safer. Cutting his spear slightly earlier as well. Mm. Waddle's macro is going to be relatively unharassed. But yep, Geese yep. has all the map control until Waddle actually gets some units out. So he's able to just get a much better scout of the map as well um, so as long as he doesn't really throw anything away park these spears in a good spot to come in and deal some more harass oh and this is this is great he's going to be just on the edge of the town center range and he's should be more have some... more than enough villagers here plus the empower yeah you gotta yeah, go for he some needs villagers. To focus the villagers and try and get what value he can out of that which he's doing now he's gonna get a villager but what's oh, gonna micro the other one away which is really nice really Whoa, strong that's, that's yeah, that's a good micro there from Waddle to get that second one out. The first one he unfortunately did lose, but... <laughs> In the face of the Spearman, he's just yeah. putting down a pulse. I love it. And yeah, easy cleanup, easy cleanup. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a pretty good cleanup for him. PFDK was here on Geese's Greeks. <laughs> and Sharima from uh, League of Legends, I believe. That's one of the deserts. In the, ah, okay, yeah, okay. For Waddle. Yeah. Um, the name I'm not. Of... I'm not a big league player these days, but I used to be. So. Hmm. I, I wasn't particularly good by any means. I just played a lot. <laughs> yeah, I never, yourself, never really got into league. Uh, I played it like once or twice, but not like 
five years ago, like recently, and now it's like, oh, yeah, okay, nah, nah. not my thing. But what is my thing is watching Waddle uh, potentially be be leading this one. Twenty two villagers to the twenty, and this is an even more delayed second town center, mm. right? Well, that's it. I mean. I think East is planning to go for like an early market next to that distant second town center and sort of rely on almost like a, a PVE safe distant second TC big market line early on. But in yes. saying that, if Waddle yeah can punish this early enough, and then I'm liking these double yeah. barracks. This double barracks to me signifies like fast production units pumping out an army quickly uh, and hopefully being able oh, to right. harass East. This, this quick. is what he needs. He's got. A little bit of food and gold in the bank to queue up the units as soon as they finish. He's already on the second one. He can start adding a little bit more now. He's not terribly far behind in terms of military on the field in about a minute. So yes, and all geese really has is spearmen. So I think he has like, a. What are they going to do against that thing, Really? Oh no! Here we go. He's got toxodes. He's, He's gonna got start one in. one tox. He's got one tox, one spearman left. Uh, but Waddle sees this great. Vision with a scout, so he sees yeah, this. He's, he's making some scout. slingers, making some more axemen. Oh, nice! We're gonna get the great unmounted oof Egypt versus Greek engagement, and then Geese is gonna have to decide whether or not he wants to add Saris or just tech up to age three and try and force a um, you know, cab cab engage between both players. Yeah, so you're really interesting on here. Uh, Ace in the chat saying it's a bad TC by Geese. What is your thoughts on this? Um, um, if he gets pushed early, it's a bad TC. <laughs> if his opponent doesn't see it, and then he uses it to, like I said, throw down a second, like throw down an early market that's going to be of good value, put his third TC in the middle or some towers, you know, it can be of huge value and it can make him like pretty much unkillable with the like the economic leverage he gets out of having the markets down safely and early. So but, I yeah, I agree that, with like, you, the, but yeah, the issue. So like, in saying that, the, oh sorry, go yeah, for it, go, go, go for it. Sorry, man. Like in saying, it, I think it sort of depends on, yeah, how well it gets scouted. Um, yeah, how much you sort of mind game your opponent, you put pressure on early. And I think because Geese did have the initial spear push, it sort of gives him the ability to do it. Mm. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that logic. Um, I, I will say though that um, because he has to make Toxodi and Toxodi costs so much wood uh, and just resources in general, like he doesn't have the resources to put up a market line and then produce spear, uh, produce some. Yeah, well that's true. Or Egypt's a much better civet flooding early age two with units like we can see right now. Yeah. Um, and especially with Geese, because he had the distant second TC, it took longer to get up. He's got less villages. Yep. So yeah, Waddle's really losing. Trading a storehouse to get a couple of military kills there, which is actually really positive his way, because he's just gone on to the berries instead. Yeah, he's getting up uh, an early army as well. He is yeah, close, this is though. Nice. This time, yeah, this time he's about 15 pop a ahead of where he got the armory last time. Yes. Yes. as well so i think this is a nice sweet spot for him like you said last game he probably had two little units to really take advantage of getting that armory upgrade but now when he gets that mixed armor upgrade for egypt against like a composition that is of mixed damage type it's going to be of such value for him it'll be great like it's i think it's probably really only someone like norse you might want to go for one of your damage upgrades first yeah, almost necessary because yeah, because you need to get kills yourself, and if you go for the armor upgrade, you're basically paying to get ranged armor against a sieve that's not going to throw any ranged at you till age three. So, yeah, I don't know. That's sort of my logic to it. Yeah, no, um, solid, solid. And yeah, the North players literally just—they're just, just going to get um, melee damage, and then probably melee armor, and then ranged armor or ranged damage because they'll take it to age three from there. But yeah, macro wise. Waddle doing reasonably well. He's doing very, very well. And he's going to move very up well. on the left-hand side of the map while Geese with a fairly even-sized army. Maybe Waddle's a little bit bigger, but, you know, yeah, it's Egypt. He... So. Well, that's it. And has he scouted that topside base? He has scouted, like, one house, I think. I don't think he's scouted 
the full thing? Nope, never mind, take that back. Oh, he scouted the full thing. Okay. Okay, alright. Love now it. This, yeah, well, because because Geese hasn't really walled and towered it up, you know, it's not two town centers protecting each other, it's just one town center and a clump of buildings, so... Yeah, yeah there's he, lots of exposed villages. He can lose a lot here, unless he shoves Waddle's base right now and forces him to retreat. Oh, when he is forcing well, him to actors, retreat. Look at yeah, that. those guys are going to get picked off if they engage Geese, but... The geese is going to pick that up for free, but at the same time, this is costing him time pushing up the top. And Waddle can just defend at home and, yeah, try and take that town center take out. Take houses or down. It's going to get take all these... these houses and the villages. Yeah, he's going to cost a lot of gathering time. Yeah, and there's not much else, like, in, in his base that geese could have used to to defend this. And he's losing so many villages. See the villager count here, 58 to 57. So I think Waddle's just dropping a couple um, villagers, but... Yeah. yeah, well, that's it. And then he sort of closed that slight gap. I think it was two or three behind Geese leading into this. And so now he's actually slightly ahead. He just yeah. needs to pull these slingers back because Geese has sent Saris in first, which is good for Geese. He's pulled them out of the main army and sent them in first to maximize the speed rather than just bunching everything up and moving it together. I like yeah, this. Guys, he's so sacrificing it all for this TC. He geese. might get it in time, but the villagers are now... The villagers are now repairing. Yeah, he probably needs to pick off the villagers instead of focusing down the TC now because he can get a whole bunch of vill kills, but at the but same Waddle's time he's not just paying attention. Farming. He's not paying attention to this. Oh, geese. yeah, geese has run out of stone. Oh, oh no, could he get Waddle's it? Waddle's gonna get it. Oh no. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Waddle what? got it. <laughs> what a play! The sacrificing. Wow, wow. Fifty-nine villagers to the sixty now, and one TC down. That, I did not expect that to work. I thought that Geese, with, with more than enough talks in the mix, I thought that was going to be enough, but Waddle it wasn't. needs to produce a lot now. He's 50 popped down. If he can get this fortress up, though. Oh, no. He needs. He probably needs There's to no back way. off from the fortress. Save those vills. And, oh, There's yeah, no he way he's to, getting he, this up. Yeah. He, yeah, he needs to abandon the fortress and just pull back, get all the military he can, put some towers up in his base, because he's not going to finish that in time. And he's going to move and in right with now, this small amount well of army. But... army. Yeah, that's it. This isn't enough. You can't take this little... fight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, smartly I mean, running. Good, good, good. Was good but... Yeah, sniping the TC was good, but at the same time, he just might not have enough to defend now. This fortress could keep him in this game. He, and he has barracks. He needs to drop down a couple more barracks, maybe. Um, he's got some guard towers on one side for defense. He's hopefully going to get up this... Yeah, yes. This fortress is going to go up. Um... But now Waddle's in H3, right? Geese is still in H2. He could easily go to H3. He should be going to H3. But um, oh, so many so many idle villagers, 60 to 65. So Geese is still ahead on villagers, and there's like 20 villagers here idle. Um, okay. He's pushing in. Yeah. Let's see. If, I think it'll work. Uh, yeah, Waddle's doing some good micro, enough. but it's not it's enough. He really needs the fortress to probably shoot at the moment, I think. But the Toxodes, but the Saris as well. There's not really a lot to deal with them. There's no camels, and any spearmen that are heading in are just dying. But they're all looks like it's just Axemen actually. Oh, but I say, oh, it's Axemen champion. Man, fortresses are so strong. That was yeah. That's great work by the fortress. So solid, solid static defenses, and he's getting up uh, elephants. He's getting up tons of Axeman Champion. Um, just doesn't have enough production, I think. Yeah, he's only yeah, sitting on these three barracks. And Geese is like, he's getting even more back here. Armory, stable, stable, stable. So Padromos are going to come out, I'm sure. Uh, like six stables? Yeah, yeah a bunch of Padromos. Stacks of Padromos as a nice general melee frontline unit. Because other than Spears and Camels... With Padromos and Toxodes, you can really just push. The Padromos are going to be one of the best units he's got under the Fortress and Town Center and Tower Fire. Ooh. I'm oh, liking there's this. more elephants too, so. Yeah, so the Padromos would be a natural good counter to that. And, yeah, good block. So he can get Tox damage on the War Elephants too. Well, but the Padromos really... count is low, he could push in. Um... Yeah, well, that's it. Well, the Padromos count is low, and it's only Sari and Tox. 
thinks are actually all the Egyptians' way with the engagement. Ahura Mas, I think, the as blessed. As as not too many Axemen get picked off straight away. Uh, Chapasin, thank okay. you for the follow. Yeah, thanks for the follow, man. And both players just sort of backing off a little bit for the time being. They're not really confident they can push in, but Geese has 50 pop advantage over Waddled at the moment. Mm, this is I'm so interesting, like, him, but... Wild going for things like these armory upgrades rather than making sure he has enough of an army. I wonder if that's like a, that's a trap that I never saw before, but it seems like he's falling into quite a lot. I don't know, it's just not, it's, yeah, he's just not so, so sharp on all this spending, I think, in general. But I mean, it's sort of good too that he is remembering to take the armory upgrades it's, as it's well. It's smart, yeah. But Usually, yeah, that's he what does I'm need to work on his production a little bit and be a bit careful with his gathering. Like right now, he's got a lot of villagers exposed. I mean, for now, he's able to gather, but geese can come in and snipe those with those saris quite quickly. Yeah, Meanwhile, the underside of the map. Champion. Yeah, we'll sing a chant. It's going he can on be really good against the tops, but at the same time, he needs to have enough of the war elephants maybe even looking at you know single stables oh tried to split up this war elephant i'm i'm liking the fact that waddle knows when he can't take the fight and he pushes back like that's mm, really really oh, smart the villages, oh that's good yeah so i was a bit worried he might lose oh he's, he's missed micro them onto the trees so he's not going to get them all the way out oh oh now he will yeah yeah i was a bit worried he might leave them there too long and lose them all because right now i don't think he can afford to do so economically geese is in a wonderful position 180, 180 pop, getting three armory upgrades, no, two armory his... upgrades at a time, so. Yeah. But yeah, still, yeah, Waddle just down on production, doesn't have um, nearly as much production as Geese, who's pushing in now with quite a scary Greek army. 38 Tox champion, we got Padromos in the mix to counter the elephants, but the elephants are going straight for the back line. And that area of effect oh, yeah, damage, that is some scary stuff. They chewed a oh. hole, hole right through the Tox. Wow, great, yeah, great work. Yeah, really needs to split up the Toxodes, and right now they've bunched up a whole bunch of trees. Oh, man, look at this. Elephants on them. That's that area of effect. Stop great work. I don't know how that how, how that went uh, not Geese's way, but impressive. Very impressive stuff. Oh, but in the meantime, he is raiding down there on that gold mine, so that's really smart the best of him to do party. so. So even though he got punished for keeping his bowmen well too stacked up there, I think he probably could have spaced them out a little bit better. Um, he's getting the pressure on, on bottled still, who's having to still try and secure on some pop. more gold. And he's yeah, still well down on pop. He surprisingly has not made a market line. Oh, just now has a market line, but doesn't... Uh... Hasn't been producing many caravans, despite having like a really, really solid and well-defended market line. Walling this all up, doesn't want yeah, any I think nonsense. I confident that um, he could just churn on his gold for a little bit more, because I mean, I think he's still got um, another safe gold mine in his base that he hasn't even touched yet. So, he does have that trick up his sleeve, so he probably could afford to just delay the market. But meanwhile, I don't think Waddled has one, does he? Uh, and he no. could really probably do want to try and catch up here. No, he does not. Yeah, this is a good third town center to, to defend against this. Garnigan getting another fortress. So I, I love to see the static defense. But I do think... Um, I, I do think, yeah, walls are necessary on this map. Necessary. Oh, that's it. He probably needs to... So both start. are seemingly walling this section yeah. off. Geese walling this section off. And... No, here we go. He I was about to say resigning he's not to fight on this side, but unfortunately. Yeah, Geese wants to... It is nice as well. I mean, if you do get the slight wall timing advantage, just to try and sneak your own siege in behind it as well, just so you've got that little pressure advantage. Take fights on the other side. And I think Geese is going to look at doing that, coming up his armory upgrades again. Yep. What are going to get? Is that Camel Champ? Camel Champ, yes, getting more camel. So he's switching to a camel, chariot archer, and axeman composition, which is yeah. quite good against all of these Padromos, then Hoplites, then Toxodes. But uh, a couple more elephants in the mix would be good. 
And yeah, the, that's... a little bit more camel riders would be also good. But That's it. A couple more um, elephants, maybe even a couple of priests or priestesses even. Just so you can try get some converts, try get some healing. Oh, he's pushing in with his main army. Oh, and now he actually, speaking of priests, he's going to lose one for free. Just over on that top side of his army. Yeah, that tower. Yeah, his tox ball is exposed, though. And again, it's yeah, fighting it's under... True. It's right under, right under the fortress, so... Waddle's going to get some good value out of that. He is falling yeah, back, Waddle's... and he's just yeah. trying to push in past the fortress, which is the smartest thing you can do. That being said, the majority of the anti-cav is gone, so... It's only like yeah, a couple that's it. of lights. That's it. There's elephants and camels popping out on top of these Toxodes, which Geese is having to try and frantically pull back to his, uh, his own side of the map. But there is a ram he's going to try and sneak in. There is going to be camels to deal with it, though. Yeah, smartly pushing this back. Yeah, a bunch of bunch of war elephants would be really strong with some like just spearmen in the back, or uh, even camels in the back. Yeah, that's it for sure. I think Camels probably, because you can also deal with the Tox without having to worry too much about him just focusing him down. And yeah, you can take good fights with the Prods, so... Yeah, a Camel, War Elephant, and either Chariot or Axeman based comp, I think is a really nice mix for the uh, Egyptian player. Mm-hmm. Well, of unfortunately just... Well, okay, some good options. Yeah, Padromos are a really scary unit to try and deal with. Yes, very much so. And now that they have nearly all of their armory upgrades and Geese is going age 4, sending up a strong market line, getting up his fourth TC, I'm sure, any second now, uh, once he gets to 300 wood, uh, 300 stone. like. And then sort of Waddles is, Waddles is playing the game of uh, how quickly can I try to get to 180 of 180 pop. And before my opponent comes in and pushes in, yeah, well, I mean, he probably needs to do a bit of work to get there now. Oh, this is a very Jesus scary army. Killing fleets and it's a very, yeah, it's a very scary army for Waddle, but at the same time, Geese is going to try and get some more eco damage out still. Yeah. And try and utilize the fact that he's got his age 4 now, so he can get to 200 pop. Getting Prodromo's champion as well, so he might be able to get some building Ooh, damage this. up here. Oh, but this is really scary as well. The War Elephant's going to be able to return the favor. In kind, right? Building damage bonus. Yeah, that's it. But here come the Padromos. And there's no... There's only a couple Camel Riders here in the mix. Uh, yeah, but that's... The rest all, of them are down here. That's it, but I think those War Elephants are getting some good shots off on the Toxodes. They're going to end up killing them all. Oh my there's goodness, not again. Quite enough, definitely. Even Padromos Champion aren't good enough. Good pickups. And these Elephants yeah, well, live it. to fight. That's it. I think the elephants. Oh, and there's a priestess there healing them as well. So I think the elephants just managed to get right on top of the Toxodes without geese really noticing because he sort of tried to beeline on one of them while ignoring all the rest. Like, I think he probably might have been better off just trying to poke at the chariots there and waiting for a little bit more of the units before he really engaged. He was only throwing away a couple of forward barracks there, maybe those uh, siege workshops to do so, but right now he's lost a lot of army. Look at his what population. Look at his population, yeah, 122 of 200. He's getting hippo, uh, Hippocons, which is our fantastic units, you know, obviously. Uh, hippo power, but... Man, I uh, I think... Aren't elephants better than hippos? Um, so if, if well, that's it. He, still needs, he still needs, like, Prodromos, I think, and either Gastras or Priests or Ballistas or something as well to try and deal with this army from Waddle because unless he's going to try and micro perfectly with Toxodes Prodromos, he's never going to win another fight with that one now that he's fallen behind Yeah, and yeah. lost that previous fight which was sort of his opportunity to like get a lot of value out of such a comp. Oh, but this is a very scary army here, like lots of chariot archers, lots of camels, some elephants um, and yeah, Geese is still struggling to get anything from uh from his economy he's only he's done 91 villagers to 61 but not enough food not enough food villagers and this is the one opportunity i think that that waddled has in this game like other than the first push but 
Did you just say he's got like a 30 villager advantage over Waddle? And Waddle's already got a 30 pop advantage over him. So Waddle's got 60 more army pop out as Correct. well. So, yeah. He, and these are elephant. These aren't like, these aren't, uh, this is not a, a cheap army. This is H3 no. armory upgrades, full elephant composition with with camels, with everything. Yeah, he's got, yeah, camels. He's got chariots there and support. So this is perfect for him. I'd love to see Geese get some... Oh, and there's even more raiding back here going on. The Vadromos oh, no. are trying to do some good stuff, He's but... Food his food week is going, going by the wayside, but putting more and more villagers on it. Um, yeah, it needs to just use these, these camels, use these uh, uh, war elephants effectively on the buildings. Um, That's it. He probably needs to try and bring... Focus down individual buildings now to, to and try and... Minimize his... Well, he's got a slightly smaller Ica than his opponent. And, oh, there's a Hippicon. Yeah, I was wondering what the heck thing, was there. But it's not going to last okay. too much longer. Lots more villagers here that are exposed. And these chariot archers are perfect for just mowing down villagers. Stopping and shooting and fighting. But now it looks like Waddle's sort of just going all over the place. Not not focusing his attack on anything. So he's losing these chariot yeah, archers. Yeah, fighting those bombs while he could be attacking that... Uh, Cavalry army of geese is attacking his chariots is a big loss for him there because I mean with those camels and the elephant in the mix he probably would have won that fight. Yeah, and so geese still down on population, still doesn't have like that many people on food, but um, his army is spread out too much I think. Yeah, now there's a critical number of padromos. I hope. I hope. I, I don't know. I sort of want to see what will take this first one. He's doing really well. He is doing sure. really well, but now his armor upgrade. His, his armor upgrade lead is no longer what it once was. Um, let's see, villager count 78 to 54. So yeah, somehow Geese did some good damage to Waddle's eco, but yeah, I think he's snuck in two or three Pedromos just onto that gold line. I mean, two or three Hippocons just on that gold mine in the south base. Yes, probably. Um, but this is it. Like, the majority of of Waddled's army has now been defeated, and the populations have shifted once again. So Geese finally getting his economy underneath him, getting his feet underneath him, and I'm sure he's going to group up very shortly. And he's got some rams knocking at the door of Waddled right now, who's still in age three only. Yeah, it's, uh, this has been a very back and forth game. Much more so than I anticipated. It looks as though Geese has got enough to be able to finish off Waddled here. Waddled might not have enough left in the tank here for this game, I don't think. He's got, he's got lots of resources, just needs to build more actual uh, uh, villagers. Like, the longer this game goes on, the longer Geese is much larger villager count is going to matter. Well, that's it. He's slowly gathering more and more, and until Waddled can actually take a fight and max out, and on even population footing, because he's 20 pop down, with even max, because he's not even age 4 yet, so... And Geese is going to be able to add in age 4 tech, keep on pushing, and Waddled's going to come under serious pressure here, because that that inner wall lining is going to die, and then he's going to have to defend all these those five stables there. Yeah, can you tell where Geese is going to go with this army? Straight for the market line, baby. <laughs> um, oh, or maybe actually... in the in the back line where the markets are, but there's quite a lot of static defenses here, double TCs, lots of guard towers here, and instead right-clicking houses. Um, sorry, Geese Swallow yep. doesn't need those houses. <laughs> <laughs> not right now oh another raid coming here so multi-pronged raids this one with rams yeah this one's gonna be able to deal a bit more damage i think he's yeah. got enough there to just chew through the town center regardless of the villages and yeah he'll be able to pick all them up and probably ignore the fortress and keep streaming on past it to attack other eco in a sec now because he's got that big critical mass of the uh padromos champ now yeah, so uh, 
it's a sloppy game, I'll say, for Geese, and, and Waddle's been playing quite, quite, quite well, Ace, so. Yeah, I suppose Geese is possibly just nervous, too. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a nerve-wracking environment, right? Like. Yeah, a couple of misplays, but he's getting on top of his macro whenever he is taking these bad fights, and he seems to also be, you know, pushing Elstra on the map. It, a couple of those early fights, like in age three, though, went really, really badly for him. And I think Waddle could have just about closed out the game had he been, you know, a bit yes. more confident or experienced. You know, you're right about that for sure. And Waddle, yeah, has played a really good game and series here. But Geese is going to be able to level all of that uh, smaller static defense around the town centers, the towers, and get yeah. all those houses down while Waddle doesn't have a huge amount of wood in the bank. He's got to transfer some of that gold to wood, which will really hurt him. And, and slow him down, because he's going to lose all these caravans too, and he taps out. GG, well played. Taps out, GG, well played. Such a such a smart play. Like Even even at the time when Waddle didn't need all those houses, eventually he will. Um, and especially like when the game is 30 minutes in, you kind of expect your opponent to have thousands of resources in the bank. And so a smart way to, to negate that resource bank is to destroy all the houses, so... Well, small, well played by Geese. 2-0. Another 2-0 victory.